Hey, welcome to another tutorial from Photoshop is Fun. Now today what I want to do is introduce you to an image adjustment within Photoshop called HDR toning. And we're going to use HDR toning on a single image to simulate the look and feel of true HDR photography. And if you're not familiar with what HDR photography is, the HDR stands for high dynamic range and essentially what this means is taking multiple images all set at different exposures of the same composition or the same scene and usually this is done on a tripod and fusing them all together to create a single output image and it allows you to take the best colors the best lighting and the best details from all those various images and put them into a single image and very often your um, output will be an image that's um, you know really brilliant and has a lot of pop to it and very often looks surreal or you know it, it can look very um, illustrated so let me show you what true HDR is first and then we'll jump into the HDR toning technique okay so here I have a picture of a tractor set at a particular exposure and then I took another picture of that same tractor again using a tripod but set at a different exposure and in total I did five different pictures at five different exposures and then I fused them all together to get my HDR photograph and here's what the final output looked like and as you can see the colors really pop the detail is good it has kind of this um, surreal look to it. it there's just something about it that really stands out and that's what HDR photography is and we're going to use this image adjustment called HDR toning to create this kind of look and feel but using just a single image rather than multiple images and the truth is um, it'll never be as good as true HDR photography that's just why there is HDR photography um, but it's a nice technique to add to your workflow and I think what you'll find is it works for a lot of your different photographs and I'll tell you right out of the gate this technique works best with landscapes and static objects as soon as you introduce people into your photographs in this technique it becomes very difficult and you have to have very fine-tuned skills to make it work so I highly recommend you start with static objects and landscapes when you're kind of honing in your own um, skill set for this technique so all of that said let's get started using um, HDR toning Okay, now that I just told you that when you're first learning this technique to use an image that doesn't involve a person, my example does have a person in it. However, um, the subject's face is not in the photograph, and that is really the distinguishing part of the statement I made earlier. So that said, let's jump into this and let me show you the HDR toning technique. Okay, so for this particular photograph, what I'm going to do is some masking in the end. I'm going to take some pieces of the HDR toning that I'm going to do and then blend it into the original, which is what you see here. So in order to do that, I need to duplicate this particular file. And to do that, I'm going to go over to the layer and I'm going to right click and select duplicate layer. And instead of just duplicating the layer, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the whole document. And so I selected new. And then I'm going to go ahead and call that HDR toning and what it'll do is create a new document as you can see right here in my tabs called HDR toning so I have two of the same image and the HDR toning is the one I'm going to add my adjustments to and then I will move that over to my other document and then mask them together and we'll get we'll get to that as we get into it okay so I'm on my HDR toning file I'm gonna go up to image adjustments and then HDR toning and Photoshop's gonna ask me if I really want to do this uh, because it's going to collapse any layers that I have as well as remove any smart object information and I want to go ahead and say yes and then what it'll do is it'll bring up a, um, a series of controls that are specific to HDR toning and this is exactly where we want to focus in and make some of our adjustments so the next thing I want to do is zoom in on my image so that I can see the changes I'm making a little more clearly. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and hold down the control key and then select um, the plus sign. And that'll allow me to zoom in a bit. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the HDR toning controls. So right at the top, you'll see a drop down with a series of presets that ship with Photoshop. Now, I use these as a flashpoint or a starting point for a creative direction that I want to go. And I highly recommend that you do the same. So once you have your image up, go ahead and go through these different presets to see if any of them inspire you in a particular direction that you want to take your image. So let me go through and show you a couple of them just to um, give you an idea what they're like. So here's Surrealistic. And here is uh, Scott 5, which I use quite a bit as a starting point. 
And then monochromatic is nice for um, doing black and white work. I highly recommend that for um, any type of black and white work that you're doing that, where you want to do kind of an HDR look and feel. Um, for this particular image though, I'm going to go ahead and go with more saturated. And the reason is, is because I want to take the color and those leggings, that rainbow um, effect, and I want to really um, highlight those on my final product, as well as the blues and the way that light is hitting her skirt. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start with more saturated. Now, as you get into the controls, um, the method that you will nine times out of ten want to use is local adaptation. And the reason is, is because these other options um, really don't give you the same kind of flexibility that um, local adaptation does. So I highly recommend you stay there. Um, edge Glow is all about the um, glow off all the contrasting areas. So you can see in HDR what you often get is this glow effect and um, generally speaking you want to minimize that as much as possible just depending on what you what you want to do but um, generally speaking that's what people do. Um, so the radius is about uh, how far out or how close that glow is to those edges and you can see as you crank it up it gets further away and I want to go ahead and um, the 252 mark is perfect for what I want to do here. Now the strength is about the contrast of that glow. So if you come way down here, you can see how it looks. If you crank it up, you get an idea as well. And I want to be around the 2.0 two, uh, 2 mark. Um, smooth edges is all about the transitions between those two things. And um, generally speaking, I keep smooth edges turned on. I like how it looks. And then when you come down to the tone and detail section, you have gamma exposure and detail. And if you're not familiar with gamma, basically what it means is it's the brightness of the mid-tones in the image. And um, so you can make adjustments there. Uh, you can see if I were to crank it up, etc., you kind of get a different, a different look. So I'm going to go ahead and stick it at uh, about the 0.37 mark, which I think is where I started. And then exposure is about the brightness. Um, in terms of image tone within within your photograph and then details exactly what it sounds like now down in advanced you have uh, you know you can adjust your shadows and your highlights as well as your uh, vibrance and your saturation now a lot of people get confused about vibrance and saturation um, vibrance basically when you crank that up what it's going to do is it's going to amplify your muted colors and muted colors are primary and secondary colors that have been mixed with a gray to kind of tone them down so cranking that up will go ahead and um, eliminate a lot of that gray and allow those muted colors to really pop now saturated um, saturation is basically it amplifies all the colors in the photograph and not just the uh, muted colors. so that's the difference between the two and then down here you have a fairly typical um, curve adjustment um, that you can use it'll take all of your settings up here and it'll um, uh, do that curve adjustment application to your image so for all intensive purposes just to kind of show you the direction I want to go for this particular image I'm gonna go ahead and say okay at this point Okay, so now we've had our HDR toning effects applied. I'm going to go ahead and close the tractor um, images that I showed you earlier as my HDR example, just so we have them out of the way. Okay, so what we're left with is the original image, as you'll recall, and also the um, new HDR toning version. So what we want to do is basically take the HDR toning image and move it over to the original file and then start working with the two through a masking technique. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say duplicate layer and move it over to um, the original file name and it'll do so as a new layer. Go ahead and say OK if you get this. And now I'm back over here and as you can see I have two layers now. One is the HDR toning layer and then the other one is the original. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead now and start masking in the areas of the HDR tone version that I want to keep in the original image. Okay, so to start my masking I am going to hold down the Alt key and then click the uh, mask icon down here in the layers panel. And what that'll do is it'll mask or hide all of the HDR toning um, effects that I did on this layer until I reveal them and to reveal them if you're not familiar with masking you uh, do so with a white paintbrush so I make sure that my paintbrush is selected 
I want to have a um, soft paintbrush so my hardness is turned all the way down and the size of your paintbrush is just going to depend upon what you need for your particular image. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in and the first thing I want to do is bring out the color in these leggings. So I want to bring out the HDR toning version. So I'm going to change my foreground color to white so that now as I paint it'll start to reveal the HDR toning colors. Okay, so the leggings are done, and if you're not familiar with uh, masking, a cool trick that you can do is hit the bracket key on your keyboard to reveal where you've masked and where you've maybe missed. So you can see I've done that. It turns everything red except for where I've actually applied my mask. You can see there's some areas in here that I missed, so I'm just going to go ahead and go back over them. Now, if you make a mistake with your mask and you go outside of the area you intended to, let's say like that, for example, all you have to do is switch your foreground color back to black, and then you can just color that back in and it'll um, go ahead and remask that area and that's basically how that works so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and continue to um, uh, get all of the areas of the legging as well as the dress that I wanna go ahead and bring in so I'm gonna switch back to white it's my foreground color to go ahead and continue my masking and then we'll um, stop back here and wrap this up
Okay, so you can see that um, by doing this uh, simple masking technique uh, with my HDR toned image layer that I'm able to bring out some of the really more dramatic and colorful pieces of the photograph. Now again, if I hit the bracket key, I can um, remove the uh, red um, visual for the sh uh, that indicates the mask is on. And you can already start to see what I can do with this photo. So let me show you the original. Pretty drab and kind of boring. And then as you add in the color, you can really do some dramatic things. Now, if I were to finish this photo, what I would do is I'd probably do something with the sky to make it more dramatic and more stormy. Um, and then I'd also probably darken up the dock a bit. But I'm not going to take the time to do that here because I don't want to spend much more time um, on this video. I just wanted to give you an idea of how HDR toning works and how you can use it and apply it um, to your own photographs. Thanks, and I'll see you for the next tutorial.